Samuel from the Hartford Be Behavioral Health Group to say a few words. Samuel? Hello, good day. Come on over here. Okay. This is yours. Hello, everyone. My name is Samuel Okeoji. I'm, I work with Hartford Behavioral Health. I'm here with my CEO, Josie Robles, uh, my colleagues, uh, Christine Lawson and Ms. LeBron. Um, we just want to come here to present our, our point of view as, our, as an agency. We are living in uncertain and troubled times. At Hartford Behavioral Health, we see the impact of mental health issues on children, young people, adults, and families on a daily basis. Now more than ever, there's a growing awareness of the important role that Hartford Behavioral Health and other providers play in the lives of our communities. Today, we stand together to affirm the need for resources to support and treat individuals suffering with behavioral health issues, often in silence, in isolation, in fear of being stigmatized simply by seeking help. Just days ago, a new report from Connecticut Department of Health revealed that mental disorders surpass respiratory problems and all other elements as the leading cause of hospitalization for children ages 514, teenagers and young adults in Connecticut. This report shows that the number of days that patients with behavioral health problems surged 5.3 percent between 2011 and 2013 to nearly 260,000 uh, patients days. Other categories including cardiac cancer declined in the, during the, that time. The good news is there is a heightened awareness of mental health health issues, especially among young people, which is likely a result of the work we are accomplishing through the services we provide in the community. The bad news, the shortage of residential and outpatient services is further threatened by looming funding cuts to social services, including behavioral health and substance abuse issues. A large proportion of half of behavioral health clients are low-income Hispanics and African Americans. Connecticut Office of Multicultural Affairs reported that ethnic and racial minorities have less access to behavioral health services, are less likely to be referred for service, services, delayed seeking services, are likely to receive services. Barriers include too few bilingual providers and preferences for culturally and racially similar providers. Consequently, Hispanics and African Americans have higher inpatient utilization for behavioral health issues than their white counterparts. African Americans have three times more utilization and Hispanics have twice the rates. When individuals connect with have for behavioral health as signs of illness first emerge, crisis and costly hospitalization can be uh, prevented, saving thousands of state dollars while saving lives. As we look forward further to the future in which people of color will represent half of the population, now it is time to be forward thinking about addressing behavioral and other health disparities and ensuring that our system of care is something that can count, we can count on. Thank you. I want to thank Samuel for coming here because what is important is I think the legislators who are here, not only supporting this budget, but those in this capital have heard from their constituents that cutting social service needs is something, is a core function of government that we must do. And when a budget seeks to balance itself by cutting those services as opposed to looking in other directions, that's when there's a problem. So our budget looks at the social services. And we restore the Husky A to approximately 12,100 people. Those are folks who were, by the governor's proposal, were dropped and said, go get the Affordable Care Act. It's available. But those people on the lower end of the Husky scale can't afford that plan. We put them back. We put the burial benefits back for those who can't afford it. In the second year, we put 2% increase in the COLA for the private providers. We all know, we've all seen the program review investigative report that said private providers do a great job at their care. But if we don't give them the money, 
We're going to starve them out of existence. We need to fund them, at least to the cost of living. We have added $15 million to DDS, so 185 people can come off the DDS waiting list and we can move them. Something that we need to make a commitment of in the state of Connecticut. We have made DCF reforms with our, with our budget as well. These are the core functions of government. These are things we have to make a priority. These and many more, but these are the highlights of the spinal cord of our budget.